Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jules once again and welcome to Module 2, the Data Analysis. And for the first lesson, we're going to talk about the basic concepts in statistics. If you are to describe the numbers, what can you say? Notice that these numbers are just random and could mean anything, right? But if we are to get a meaningful information out of these numbers, it would still be possible if we use statistics. Statistics is a branch of mathematics that deals with the scientific collection, organization, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of numerical data in order to obtain useful and meaningful information. Statistics would help us transform numbers into something that makes sense which can be used every day to describe and analyze the world we live in. Why do we need to study statistics? We need to study statistics in order to read and understand the various statistical studies performed in different fields. You must be knowledgeable enough about the vocabulary, symbols, concepts, and statistical procedures used in this field. For us to interpret statistical tables, charts, and other research findings, and also to know how to summarize and transform data into manageable proportions to draw conclusions. Statistics is a very useful subject. In finance, financial analysts use variety of statistical information to guide their investment plan. In marketing, brand manager can review the electronic scanner statistics and the promotional activity statistics to gain a better understanding about the relationship between promotional activities and the sales. In production, the quality analysts use a variety of statistical quality control charts to monitor the output of the production process, while economists use a variety of statistical information to forecast about the future of the economy such as the inflation rates. The statistical method they use for this task came from one of the two branches of statistics, the descriptive and the inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics is the method that is used to collect, summarize, present, and analyze a set of data, for example, describing the allocation of your monthly allowance. Inferential statistics, on the other hand, is the method that uses the data collected from a small group to draw conclusions about a larger group. By using this method, you can perform estimations, hypotheses, testing, determining relationships among variables, and making predictions. So the main difference between descriptive and inferential statistics is that its ability to predict an outcome to a particular topic. This is an example of a descriptive statistics. Because this update only describes the data that has been collected from the Department of Health, there is no inference on the possible effects from this report from the economy in the existing policy set on that said place. This one is an inferential statistics because this update predict an outcome on the expansion of the global credit towards domestic borrowers. Understanding statistical analysis will be difficult if you don't know these terms. First is the measurement. Measurement is the assignment of a number to something. If someone will ask you about your monthly internet consumption, you are using measurement if you are thinking on an amount to describe your bill. Same as with these following questions. Next is variable. Variable is the characteristic of an item or individual. From the word itself, variables can assume different values. For example, alcohol brand, test score, mobile legend ranking. If the description for the variable is too long, we can use symbols like letters. Data. Data are facts and figures collected, analyzed, and summarized for presentation and interpretation. So if your variable is alcohol brand, the possible data are Green Cross, Casino, or Johnson. If your variable is ML ranking, your possible data are Warriors, Elite, Master, Grandmaster, Epic, and so on. 
data can be classified as qualitative or quantitative. This is very important because the statistical analysis appropriate for a particular variable depends upon whether the variable is qualitative or quantitative. The first type of data is the qualitative or the categorical. These are values that can be placed into distinct categories according to some characteristics or attributes. These are some of the examples. Opinion, class at school, satisfaction, description. Next is the quantitative variable or the numerical variable. Quantitative variables are values that represent quantities counts or measurements for which representation on a numerical scale is naturally meaningful. They usually come from measuring tools such as typhoon wind speed, thermometer reading, or test durations. Now let us try to answer this one. State whether each of the following variables are qualitative or quantitative. Number one, annual sale. It is quantitative t-shirt size like small medium or large it is qualitative employee description or classification like permanent or part-time it is qualitative earnings per share it is quantitative methods of payment like cash check or credit card it is qualitative now, there are also two types of quantitative data or the numerical data. These are the discrete and continuous. Discrete data are quantitative data that are countable using finite counts such as 0, 1, 2, and so forth, such as integer values. Example, the number of Instagram followers that I have is 286. This is discrete why? Because it's impossible to have 286.5 followers, right? All that are not discrete are continuous data. These are quantitative data that can take on any value within a range of values on a numerical scale in such a way that there can be no gaps, jumps, or either interruptions. Example, the length of your phone is about 5.32 inches. Now let us try these examples. Classify each variable as discrete or continuous. Number one, numbers of words in a book. It is a discrete. Monthly net income of an employee. It's not always an exact amount and it is continuous. Person's age. This is continuous. Why? Well, if someone asks your age, you might say 25. But that is not exact 25 years, right? It could be 25 years, 5 months, and 6 days. Number 4. The numbers of books on your shelves. It is discrete. The population in Taliban. It is discrete. And that's the first part of our lesson for module 2. And next lesson, we're going to talk about the measures of central tendency. And for you to know what to do next, kindly read the description below. Thank you.